Thank you so much. You may be seated. We want to welcome you today to Stillwater's Church. Thank you so much for uh, being here in the building. And then those of you joining us online, thank you for being a part of our family. We're so glad that you are here. Well, when we chose this name, Elevate, Elevate Worship Experience, what does that mean? Well, if you're going to elevate something, you're going to raise it up. You're going to make it higher than it was. Now, there are some things we don't want to elevate. We don't want to elevate our blood pressure, right? But we do want to elevate some things in our life. How many would like an elevated view of Jesus? How many would like an elevated view of what God has for you to do in your life? How many would like to have, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, but how many would like to have parts of your life elevated higher and stronger than it was? Well, here's what I know about if you're going to raise something up, you better make something deep. Are you with me on that? If you're going to raise something up, you better make something in that foundation deep. Because the higher you go, the stronger your foundation needs to be. Well, what we're talking about is the foundation of Jesus Christ. And today, I'm going to speak to you for a few minutes on the power of communion. Because if we're truly going to elevate our year and make this a year that God is pleased with, make this a year that we achieve what God has put in front of us, make this a year that we bring glory to God, make this a better year by faith. If we're going to do that, then we've got to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And I don't, th I don't know of any other way uh, or any better way to talk about Jesus and to build on that foundation than the gospel, the power of the gospel. And I believe that when we take communion and when we understand communion, it gives us a very, very strong foundation, not just for our year, but for our life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, communion is a gift from God, and it does have great power for the Christian life. Now, I want you to understand that communion, there's nothing magical about it, but there is something very powerful about it. So what is communion? Well, communion is a symbol. It symbolizes how Jesus saves us. It symbolizes his death, burial, and resurrection it symbolizes the gospel. The bread, it, it represents the body of Jesus Christ. The wine, or in our case, we use juice. And the reason we do is for those that may have a drinking, a drinking problem. We don't ever want the church to be a stumbling block to anybody. But that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The body and the blood. The bread and the wine. Uh, Jesus initiated communion with his 12 disciples just before his death. Now, you may not know this, but communion really is a completion, if you will. It's a continuance of the Old Testament observance of Passover. Do you remember the story? Remember how that uh, the Israelites had been in Egyptian bondage for over 400 years. And God raised up a man named Moses that he was going to deliver his people. And of course, Pharaoh refused to let them go. And God told them, he said, I'm going to kill the firstborn, not just the firstborn sons, but the firstborn of every animal. And you're going to know that I'm God. But he said to Moses, he said, you need to understand something that by faith, if the Israelites will take the blood of an innocent lamb, that represents Jesus Christ, he was the fulfillment of that. And if they'll take the blood and put it on the top of the door and on the side of the doorposts, forming a cross, he said that that will be able to deliver you. And here's what he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's where we get the word Passover. And that's what Jesus did. He completed the picture. He completed what was started in the Old Testament. And so communion is a symbol. Listen to Exodus 12, 13. 
but the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Understand something, every one of us is born in need. We're in need of a renewed, resurrected relationship with God Almighty. That's why Jesus said that it's called being born again. You're being reborn spiritually because when you're born because of the sin of Adam, you're born dead. You're born separated from God. And that's why Jesus had to die on the cross as an innocent lamb and shed his blood. Why? So that the death angel will pass over you. It is by faith. It is a symbol of what Jesus' finished work is. Let me read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The apostle Paul writes this about when Jesus with his disciples took this Passover and it became the Lord's Supper or communion. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So this is to be something that reminds us of what Jesus did for us. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, that's a very important word, proclaim, it is an act of faith. Remember that. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You do know that when Jesus resurrected from the grave, he said to his disciples before he ascended back into heaven that I'm coming again. I'll be back. And that time between that ascension, the resurrection and the ascension into heaven, and when Jesus comes again is the time that you and I must live our lives in remembrance of what Jesus did. Why? It recalls God's purpose to our life. It lets us know why we are here. It lets us know what God wants us to do. We're to remember it. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let me just interject this. When I was growing up in church, I always thought that what this meant was, if the pastors always said this, before we take communion, you better take some time Examine your heart. If there's any unconfessed sin, you better confess it before God, or God's going to judge you, maybe even kill you. And man, I never was able to square that with the beauty and the glory of the gospel. Because what this is about is not Jesus' judgment on us, but Jesus' deliverance of us. That's what the gospel is. That's what Jesus did, and I just was always a bit confused. But this idea of doing it in an unworthy manner doesn't mean that these were imperfect people. Because guess what? They were. Even those disciples. Do you remember that even after the Lord's Supper, do you remember that the disciples, all of them, denied Jesus? These were not perfect men. These were transformed men. And God reminded them of his grace. So when you take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, that doesn't mean that, well, I'm not perfect. I better not take it. No, what it means is that you're not doing it in faith with the understanding of what this actually represents. He said, let a person examine himself then. And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, this is important, 
helping you to understand the discernment that is necessary. This is not that God is going to strike you with a lightning bolt if you forgot to confess that you lost your temper with your husband last week. That's not what this is about. Rather, what it means is there are people that missed out on the power of it. There are people that missed out on the amazing nature of it. There were people that missed out on the benefit of this. In fact, there were some, he said, that they eat and drink judgment on himself. That's why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that if you are flippant about uh, the Lord's Supper that you're going to die? No, no. You see, in other part of Scripture, Paul wrote that there were believers that were taking communion, and they did it in an unworthy manner. In other words, there were people that were competitive about it. I'm more spiritual than you. Man, whenever you approach the gospel like that, that is missing the point completely. It's not that you're better than another person is that none of us is as good as Jesus and we all need God's grace. There were actually Christians that had money and they didn't want to wait on the poorer people. Now, why were the poorer people late? Because they were working longer. They were working harder. And sometimes when they get there, uh, the Christians that had a little more money, a little more free time, they not only had taken all the communion, But many of them were drunk by the time that the other believers got there. And so as a result, there was no unity in the body. There was no exhibiting the love of Jesus Christ. And this actually was a love feast. That's what it was supposed to be. But it wasn't a love feast. It became a competition. It became a comparison. And how many of us have come to church comparing? Some people want to compare the way that they dress. Some people look at the way others are dressed and you look down at them. Sometimes not because of the cost of the clothing, but because of the style of the clothing. Well, I can't believe that he would wear his pants like that, you know, to church. My mom and dad were kind of raised in the idea that you had to wear a suit and tie to go to church. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I like that, in fact. Um, But the truth is, it's not about what you're wearing. It's not about comparing how good you may be, or did you hear about what he did or what she did, or that there's division among the body. That's what it means to do it in an unworthy manner. And there are people that miss out on the blessing. So what is communion? Well, it should enhance your faith. It is an act of faith. It proclaims the Lord death, Lord's death. And, and so the instruction here is that we are to take communion in faith. In faith of what? Jesus, of what he did for us on the cross. It is a symbol, of course, but it is also a reminder of what we have in Jesus Christ. And you know the reason that some people do not get the benefit that I believe can come with communion, it's because they don't do it in faith. They don't understand. They're, uh, they're not serious about their relationship with God, and, and they don't understand how important this really, really is. There's some things that communion does for you. When you understand its power, and when you understand the foundation of this. Remember, it came from Passover. What did Passover do? Um, it saved them through their faith. Now, we don't believe that communion saves you. We believe it is a symbol of your salvation. But what did Jesus do? What did God do for the Israelites? He saved them. That picture of the, the blood on the doorposts and the angel of death that said, I will pass over you when I see the blood. That's a picture of salvation. The blood of an innocent lamb, the lamb of God was shed for you and me. And every time we take communion, we should be extremely thankful for what Jesus has done for us. We should be reminded of that. Uh, He also delivered them through their faith. Did you know that Jesus 
says that he is the deliverer, God has the power to deliver you. Now, when I think about what the Israelites had to be delivered from, well, they were obviously delivered from bondage, from slavery, and that is a picture, if you will, a symbol of what binds you and me. No doubt the Israelites had to be delivered from their past, from their fear. Can you imagine how their thinking had to change? For 400 years, they were in bondage. And now they're free. Do you know that the same is true for a Christian? When you get saved, when God delivers you, there has to be a change in your thinking. And sometimes that takes time. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 12 that God will change the way that you think. A lot of times people need to have that change. You need to change about the way you see this world. You need to change about the way you see money. You need to change about the way you see marriage. You got to change your thinking. God not only saved them from something, but for something. You see, a lot of Christians don't realize that. They believe that being saved is just simply a fire insurance policy. We're going to escape hell but God has so much more for your life than just not going to hell at the end of it. What he wants for you is to be delivered. And I truly do believe that when we come in faith and acknowledge when we take communion, I believe you can pray by faith and claim if Jesus is the deliverer and if he has the power to deliver, then when you take communion by faith, ask God for that deliverance. He has the power to deliver you from your fears. He has the power to deliver you from your past. He has the power to deliver you from addictions. The truth is he has the power to deliver. He provided for them through their faith as well. He has the power of provision. There have been many times in my life when I took communion, not at church, but at home or before I started my day. And, and the reason I did that was because I believe that uh, you don't have to have a pastor in order to have communion. You can take communion anytime, anywhere. In the New Testament, they did it every night in their homes, okay? And so you can too. But there have been many times that I've come to the Lord in communion and prayer and faith and ask him to not only deliver me from something, but to provide for me. He's our provider. And then he healed them through their faith. Listen to Exodus 12, 35, 36. And the people of Israel did as Moses had instructed. They asked the Egyptians for clothing and articles of silver and gold. And the Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites. And they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. God can sometimes provide in unusual ways, but he is the provider. We are reminded that we have all we need in Jesus Christ when we take communion. Psalm 105, 37, and then he led the Israelites out and they carried silver and gold and all of them were healthy and strong. What is my point? That when we take communion we should do it in faith. We should do it as a reminder of what we have in Jesus Christ. If you're facing an issue, come to him. Receive the communion. It's not being saved again, but rather it's a reminder of what you have in Jesus Christ. You need to be delivered from something? Take communion by faith and ask God about it. You need to be provided in some way. You need to be healed in some way. Come to the Lord. Why? Because he is our protector, our provider, our healer, and he is the one through whom we are delivered. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us as we come today to take these elements, the, the bread which represents the body of Jesus and the blood which or the juice that which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to take this in a worthy manner. In other words, by faith. 
understanding that this is a very important thing. We're not to do it flippantly. We're not to do it half-heartedly, but we are to do this in the belief and the understanding that you are our hope. And so for every person today that comes to take and partake in this, help us to be connected to you. Help us to be reminded of you and what you're doing for us and help us to be reminded in faith that you are the one who supplies all of our needs. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.